the, um, the facts. I'm going to hand over to Graham Morris, first of all. Uh, thanks, Chair. I, I, ju I just want to pick up on that point. Um, Julia Leonard um, answered for the, from the Chair, because I'm still not clear, and I don't think we've had a, a, a clear answer in relation to the 546 cases. Simple question, when was the first case? When was the first case reported? Of those I, think it's, I think it's a little bit difficult with some of the figures because, of course, right at the beginning in March, the, the access to testing was very much more limited. So we have people who were off with COVID symptoms um, and, and then you get to a, a point at which where you have positive cases. So I think, yeah, it's, I, can, I can check those numbers back for you and write to you with those. Okay. Louise, do you know when the first case was reported? It was in March. It was in March, n yeah. not September. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, no. I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to you. I'd like you to, I'd like you to, to check on that, uh, on when that was, actually, because I, I think it's important. It, you, you've given the impression that the cases are spread over a nine or ten month period, when in fact there's been an enormous spike. Um, since September, when I believe the first cases were reported. I I'd also like to know uh, from Julia Leonard, uh, how do you assume that many of those cases came from the community rather than were spread inside the workplace? Is that is a, an analysis of the test uh, and trace and isolate data that's been provided um, by public health? I was going to say, it's not my analysis there, actually. That's Public Health Wales' statement to say a significant proportion would have been contracted outside of the workplace. We have worked, we do work very hard and very closely with the track and trace team. Obviously, when we're looking to see is, are there examples where it's being transmitted in the workplace? Or are we looking at isolated incidents where it is harder to see that kind of pattern? So, so that's just and, a general, and, but, okay, okay. So that's just a general statement um, from Public Health England or, or Public Health Wales, maybe that that that, that tr transmissions coming from the community—it's not based on evidence of an analysis of the workforce at the DVLA. But can I? Well, can I think I, it's very sorry. Sorry, can I just come back into? It's very difficult to know exactly definitively where someone has has actually contracted no, no, it. Isn't. Isn't no, no, it, no, no. I'm just asking. I'm after the evidence. Like it's easy to find out when the first case was reported. If you don't know, then please check and find out. I'm, I'm, I'm not asking you to repeat general advice that comes from public health. I, I, I'm asking you for the specifics to su substantiate the statement that you made that the majority of the trans. Uh, that's, that's no, no, please let, 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 me ask, let me ask my question and then you can answer. I, I'm asking you to support. That the, 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 with evidence, the statement that you've made that the majority transmission isn't from the workplace and you, you, you haven't been able to do that to my satisfaction. Maybe you can check uh, the evidence with HR and, and come back. C can I ask another question in relation to your earlier comments about working from home? How many staff are working on site at the moment and what is different about the advice from government compared with the original lockdown in March and April, when only perhaps 200 or 250 staff were working on site, where there was no incidence of COVID transmission. What has changed in terms of the workload and demands to bring so many more staff back on site into a workplace where clearly uh, th th there is considerable evidence of uh, COVID transmission? Can I come back and, and just pick up your question, uh, Mr. Morris, on the workplace transmission? We do, in terms of the evidence, we are very much guided by the public health ways. Where they feel it is not workplace, they are treating it as incidents. Everything has been treated as an incident, apart from in December, we had 60 cases in the contact centre. And in December, that is the only part of DVLA estate of which it is is large and in different buildings that has been treated by public health wales as an outbreak and it's that case as i say in in december i'm sure there would have been some workplace transmission but in the rest of the site and the rest of the time there is no evidence that we have seen or public health has seen or had that concerns about that it is passing particularly on the site, apart from 
a handful of cases where people told us they reached social distancing. We do have that evidence that the majority of cases, it is a community transmission rather than workplace transmission. Well, Can I come back to your question as well? How, how, I want you to come Sorry, back to all the questions. How many are inside at the moment? That, um, uh, I, I, I just like some answers. Sorry, Dave, if you don't mind. Right. Can you both hear Louise, can I just stop you there, please, to, now? To... Sorry, with, we're having people talking over each other. If I can just ask for a pause. I know it's difficult with the IT, uh, but I think Mr Morris was still talking, and so perhaps if we just... Give it a break, and then Graham, do you want to come back? Yeah, yeah. Could you? Could you? Th thanks, Jim. Could you answer my specific question there about how many are currently working on site, and what has changed compared with the original lockdown advice when the government said work from home if that's possible, when only 200 or 250 people were working from site? What is the urgency that, that that's brought large numbers of staff back on site that have, that's led to this transmission? I can say what has changed definitively at the beginning in March, we very much we were not a COVID secure workplace at the beginning of March, the same as any other. We hadn't made provision for that. We hadn't made changes to the estate, which we have done over the, over the months in between. So in March, we erred on the side of caution completely. We sent home large numbers of operational staff who didn't work, who were on full pay at home for several months whilst we made the site COVID secure. So where we freed up space where the 2,000 people are at home, we're able to repurpose that space. We also introduced things like, you know, the kind of one-way systems, perspex screens. We had to wait to be able to get perspex because there was a, a kind of worldwide demand for it. So we didn't start bringing people back in until the summer months. Because we were making the, the workspace COVID secure. And as we brought people in, we also, we had, you know, we did that very gradually. We had the unions with us who inspected and were content before we brought people back in. So it was a gradual process for us to be able to do that. There was a consequence. There was a definite consequence of doing that, which is, as you have all seen, the kind of backlogs that grew because we hadn't been able to do that work in, the, in those intervening months. And so there were delays for people who were applying via paper routes. So it's, you know, but the real difference between then and now is the huge amount that we put in place, including renting another building, which is now available to make sure we could spread people out enough and have enough space so that they can socially distance and meet all of those kind of guidelines. How, how important, I'd, sorry, I'll just ask this fine, finally, you know, in terms of the work that's been undertaken there. So, for, for example, um, issuing provisional driving licences, but because at the moment it isn't possible to have driving lessons or, in, in fact, all non-essential uh, journeys shouldn't be undertaken at the moment. Why is that work being undertaken and hundreds of staff being brought into the site to do that uh, in, a, in an environment which clearly isn't COVID safe when, there are, when there's 500 people, whether they've got that travelling to work on the bus or, or in the broader community, it's put them at additional risk. Was that your decision or was it a decision above you? Well, we have worked very closely with the department and with ministers throughout in determining certainly the, the government position is essential public services should continue. Um, that is what we... we have strived to do and to put enough things in place to make sure that can be done safely. I think on these specifics, we have we have discussed that length, as I say, with the department around which some which which services we can do and which ones we can't. And it is worth bearing in mind and saying, you know, the vast majority, DVLA is a digital organization, the vast majority of our transactions are done online, which really limits the number of people who have to be on site. And that would include uh, you know, first applications which were able to be done online.